again. Glad to be back with you. And today I want to talk about how to make plots in MATLAB. Now this is something I have asked my students to do, and it's something that's new to them. They asked me to make a video to help. I am more than happy to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to draw the plot on my whiteboard here, and then I'm going to show you how to do the same thing in MATLAB. So here's how this works. I ask them to do a plot. If you're into dynamics, it's called a motion diagram. If you're not into dynamics, don't worry about it. It's just a plot that we integrate between levels. So this, is, this would show acceleration of something in motion. This one would show velocity. And this one would show position. OK, so this is in meters per second squared. This is in meters per second. And this is in meters, OK? Let me get my head out of your way so you can see what I'm talking about here. That's what I have in mind. And what we're doing here is we've got a constant rate of change of acceleration, OK? This is uh, rate, the slope is 4.905, which is half a g per second. And this is time here down on the horizontal axis. Time in seconds, so you can see that. Okay, so it's acceleration. Now what are velocity and position going to look like? Well, you integrate from, to go between levels, and you integrate again. So here's what this is going to look like. If this is an area underneath that curve, all right, and that's what we call a first order curve. It's a quarter, uh, curve described by a first order polynomial, a straight line. This will be a second order curve. Every time you integrate, you add an order. So that height right there is A1. Area here equals altitude there. That sounds like calculus, doesn't it? Okay. Next thing I need to, need to know is area 2. And that's area two right there. Okay, so the area underneath that polynomial, that second-order polynomial parabola, equals the height at the end of the curve there. And this is going to be a, a cubic curve. So first order, second order, third order. That's the big idea here. If you run the numbers, that turns out to be 9.81 meters per second, and this turns out to be 6.54. Now that one's fairly obvious, you know half a g, or a g over 2 times 2 times a half. Okay, that's got to be 9.81. That one, it's hard to say where 6.54 comes from. But if you throw the problem into MATLAB, it's not that hard, actually. So I'm going to take a break here. I'm going to set up the camera to point at my computer screen, and I'll show you how to work it. Okay, here we are looking at MATLAB on my computer. I've got it maximized so it fills up one of my screens. And before we get started, let's just take a look and see what, what, what it is in front of us here. This is uh, MATLAB, let's see, 2013B. Um, there are some more recent versions, but they still look the same. This stuff up here is the usual bunch of menu picks and things. We're probably going to stay away from those for right now, but they are pretty useful. There's five uh, white windows here that are uh, we're going to work with on the upper left here, I guess you could call this window one, this is the current folder. This is the files that live in the folder where you're currently at. So I have on one of my drives, I have this this uh, folder here called MATLAB. This is where I put my uh, uh, files or my, my videos for the brain waves. And I made one under dynamics called MATLAB. So here it is. And by the way, um, MATLAB plots 1.mp4. That's actually the first half of this video. I needed to stick it somewhere after I shot it. So here it is. Down here, we don't use this one a lot. At least we won't in, in for this example. This is uh, details of files. Now here's the big one, the command window. Because it's the biggest, it, you might think it's the most important. And it is. We'll type our commands in here and we'll see a lot of the answers come back here. Workspace. This is memory. You can't work with numbers that are not in memory. So this tells you what's in memory. Well, right now there isn't anything because I haven't started yet. Down here is command history. This is a, a list of commands I've typed in recently. Um, I cleared it out a little while ago, so it's fairly short. Before I cleared it out, I had stuff going back a couple of years. Um, and that you can recall commands very easily, so it's nice to have this list here to work with. All right, so MATLAB means matrix laboratory. It thinks in terms of lists of numbers, matrices, and vectors. So that what we're going to do is we're going to make a couple of vectors, and we're going to plot them. So first, let's make the vectors, take a look at and uh, uh, see what numbers we've got, and then we'll format this uh, uh, plot we want to make. 
So we'll start by making a, a, a list of times. Well, I need to know how many, you know, how far apart I want those times to be. So let's make a, the, the times for this list to be uh, 0.1 seconds apart. Now, as I plot, as I execute this command here, see it echoes it back to me. I've now got a variable called dt that's 0 0.1, and now it's in workspace, so I can work with it now. Now, I don't necessarily want to see all this stuff echoed back to the screen all the time, and I'll show you what we can do. I'll make a list of times that start at 0, step by dt, and go to 2. That's what that means. Start there, make the numbers this far apart, and end there. If I do that, I, I see them all again. It's bad enough if I've got 21 numbers. By the way, 21 since I start at 0. Um, what do I do if I've got, <coughs> excuse me, if I've got thousands and thousands of numbers? I don't want to see those echoed to the screen. So what I'll do in the future here is I'm going to put a semicolon at the end of every line. And what the semicolon does is uh, uh, suppresses the echo to the screen. This is called the echo. All right. So let's say acceleration and it's going to be 9.81 divided by 2 times time. That was that little uh, function I drew earlier on the board. And I'm going to put that semicolon there because I don't want to see all these. Well, do I have them? Yeah, there they are, right there. Okay, there's 21 of them just like there's 21 times. So let's see what the plot looks like. Okay, so the, the x-axis goes first, that's going to be time. The y-axis goes second, that's going to be acceleration. And see what it's doing here, it's, it's pulling up the syntax for me to help me out. I don't even have to ask for it, it just comes up, which is really nice. So there you go. And this came on the other window, I'll pull this over here. Well, there's what it looks like. Well, is that right? Yeah, it starts at zero, goes to 9.81. That's that's right. But remember, I'm not. This isn't really a smooth function. It's just a bunch of numbers. It might actually make more sense to look at it this way. Okay. For some reason, it's it's uh, bringing these plots up on my other screen, so I'll pull them down so we can see them. So there's what it looks like. That's actually more correct because when we integrate numerically we're going to actually add up these boxes so it's probably good to make sure we understand those really are just boxes okay so there's there's the acceleration well what is uh, velocity going to look like well, that's going to be uh, I have to add up all those boxes and there's two ways to do this um, cumulative summation. Now, that's not what I would call this command if I had a choice, but that's what it's called. It's called cumulative summation. It means add up those boxes uh, as a function of time. So I want to add acceleration. And because I'm trying to integrate, not just add, I need to multiply by dt. So there it is. Okay, and again, I'm going to suppress the echo. Well, does that look right? Yeah, there it is. Okay, so that looks about right. Now, it's supposed to, the the uh, uh, value at time equals two is supposed to be nine point eight one seconds. Is that? Geez, it doesn't look like it. How am I going to check? Well, what I can do? Let me move this uh, plot off the screen. I can do something. I can say grid on. I move the plot back to where you can see it. Okay, now I've just turned the grid on, and, you're, and it's, it's not right. It's above 10. Well, one of two things happened. Either I just got stupid, or that cumulative summation isn't exactly uh, an integral. Well, it's not exactly an integral. All right, I'm, I'm adding up these 21 boxes. So let's try this again. If I, there's actually another command type in V, I can hit the up arrow and recall that. Rather than cumulative summation, just adding boxes, there's another one called cumulative trapezoid. C-U-M trap Z. Well, the top of those boxes isn't really horizontal. The, the tops are not horizontal. They're actually, those boxes are really trapezoids. Well, let's, let's call them trapezoids and see what we get. I'll redo that. And let's pull up plot again. And again, I just typed in the first couple of letters and hit the up arrow to, to get to make that happen. I don't want that. I want, yeah, let's do bar instead of plot. That would be better. The up arrow, let's do that. OK, pull this up there. Ooh, look what happened. 
Well, it's less than 10 now. That's actually much more encouraging. Now, I don't have to type in grid if I don't want to, to make grid. What I can do is I can click here and just double click and it'll bring all these plot tools up. Okay, it's actually more than will fit on my screen. Um, and now it's gone to full screen. I can just turn the grid on this way if I like. And I can do all kinds of stuff. There's You, you can make uh, change all kinds of properties. Right now I don't have labels, so how about time and the y-axis here. Did I get that right? Yeah. Okay, I got that too. Let me get rid of that. I'll close that little window and shrink this down again. So there we go. That looks like about 9.81. Well, is it really 9.81? How do I tell? Well, I've got a list of numbers here. If I want to do it the hard way, I can just type in V and hit return. Look at that, 9.81 a slightly uh, less clunky way to do it is I can say give me the last value of V. Well I know the last value is value number 21 and if I don't know it's number 21 I can just say V sub n. Give me the last number in the list. Well, There it is. Okay, So that's how that works. Now I'm going to clear the screen but not clear memory. I want memory. I want all those numbers but I'm going to clear the screen. So I'll say CLC and uh, so the last thing I need to do is make position, right? So that's, I'll say X, C-U-M-T-R-A-P-Z, uh, velocity, times DT. Okay, and again, I don't want to see the whole list, so there that is. Let's do a bar plot here and look at all those X's, or all those boxes. And I'll bring those here. All right, now I know from... I know from uh, uh, my previous my example I did earlier that the right answer is 6.54. Well, is that? Let's move this out of the way and do just what we did before. Yeah, pretty close. Now, not exact because I've only got 21 boxes here. All right. Now, one other thing, um, I've got 21 boxes. Uh, I really only want to use 20 of them. Now the reason I'm getting away with this is because the first one is zero every time. Alrighty. And I'll, I'll go over that in another video. I think this is probably enough to uh, get you going for right now. So let's do this. Let's uh, go ahead and say that's close enough. Now if I want that to get closer, I can make delta t be smaller, dt, instead of 0.1. Maybe I make it point. 05 or 0.01. MATLAB doesn't care. I could make it a billionth if I wanted and MATLAB would be perfectly happy. But let's just live, live with this for now. So the last thing I want to do is I want to format this. I've got all the data to plot. Now I just got to make a, a, to format the plot. Okay, what I've done here is shrink the MATLAB window down a little bit to make room that we can use for working on our plot. Um, I have three screens on my computer. Normally I do this on two different screens, but uh, the recording software only records one of them. So we'll do it this way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a command called subplot. Okay, what this does is this makes multiple plots on the same figure, and I've got it set so it's going to make three rows, one column, and I want to work on the first plot. So there it is. And uh, I'll make this a little bigger for us here. Alrighty, so let's. I've got it right there. Let's let's do this. Let's make a plot of time and acceleration, and there it is. Okay, I need labels, so there's a command called xlabel. You just type in a string here. The stuff that lives between these single quotes that's called a string. So there it is. I need a y label. So that looks right. And see, MATLAB actually knows what a superscript is. So that up caret 2 actually shows up as a superscript. It's kind of handy. So there's the first plot. Now, I want to do the second plot. So I do the same command, only now instead of working on uh, plot number 1, I want to work on plot number 2. Well, there it is. So let's plot time and now velocity. <laughs> so x label will now be 
or I'm sorry, X label is still time. And there's some, there's a couple ways to do this. You can uh, put time under every one, or just put time on the bottom. I think that's a matter of more of preference than anything else. Okay, so there's Y label. Oops, I capitalized that. And I call that seconds, okay. That looks right. Yeah, so there, so there it is. Velocity in meters per second. You can put spaces in there if you want. Well, that works, so let's do this. the last one. 313. Three. There it is down there. So, um, let's see. Let's plot time versus x. So there it is. And uh, we can, let's see, I already know what X label is going to be. It hasn't changed, so I'll type in XL and hit the up arrow. There it is. And let's do the Y label. And we'll call that uh, position. Um, I'm going to actually write out position because I know better than to write POS down here. Um, so there's that. There you go. So there's the, a very simple uh, motion diagram. We can do all kinds of things here. If I want to turn the grid on over here, I'm actually on that plot right now. I can say grid on. There it is. If I want to put the grid on the second one, I can do this. There it is. And for the last one, I can go sub plot uh, 311. Hit the up arrow twice, pull that up, and there it is. Now I don't have a title here yet. I guess I probably better put a title on it. Plots have titles. Motion diagram. That looks like a good title. And that goes up there at the very, very top. So there you go. Let's let's stop right here. Um, so showed how what a motion diagram is, how to calculate one, um, and uh, how to make one using MATLAB. So I hope this helps, and I'll see you on the next video. Take it easy.